pretty much over. And it looks like we're going to go into Game 3, the final game of the series for Sai Reborn and Traitor. Whoever wins this will get two points in the scoreboard, while the other point, uh, all the other team, the they will still bring back dying. something and not empty-handed. Yeah. Ooh, we're oh, just going to see <laughs> that Alice being banned out already. Very fast, the very fast ban. Respect ban, nothing, you know, nothing to say. And Selena standard ban coming in from Team Traitor. It looks like Natalia will be banned as the well from Team Sai Reborn. Going in for the final ban phase. It's probably going to be Grok. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. it is. And that means first pick is, is going to go picking. over to Team Sai Reborn here. Who do they want to pick up here? Do they want to deny a... Uh, do they want to deny a hero from uh, team, team, uh, traders. team Traders, or do they want to actually get a pick that might benefit themselves here? Because, I mean, you could deny and then build afterwards. Uh, like, oh, okay, Hellcat yeah. here. <laughs> but I think, you know, the, the Hellcat and the Gushen pick is really, really useful. It's yeah. kind of impactful as well. So they don't really need to worry on whether the enemies has impactful heroes to their lineup. They just care for more and themselves first, and then try to make things work with the whatever cards they draw. It looks like Team Traitor is going to pick... Bane and Jaw hit. Like I said, Bane is, is back for Bane your lineup. Bane is back, yeah. Mm. And I'm expecting, I'm expecting Gushin, I'm expecting Mardis as well. Uh, do they want a dedicated, a dedicated tank? Oh yeah, there it is. It looks like it's going to be the Mindtrap as well as the, oh, uh, the Gushin as well. Now, that kind of means that Team Trader is going to have to pick up Lancelot, Lancelot on from themselves. Uh, but do they want to actually get Biggie again? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of have to see here. That, that one will be interesting. Going back to your question, perhaps they could replace Diggy with Kaya. I feel like Kaya would be a better option because you can use Divine Judgment and just shut down Minotaur if he wants to do it. And the rest of the teammates can follow up A and kill him off instantly. But it's going to be tough. And it looks like Team Traitor is going to hover onto Hayabusa. We never talked about him before. Because I mean, he was he rarely chosen. Up, yeah, yeah he was, uh, he's not chosen like throughout okay. the games. And now he is back into the pick lineup. All right. So now we're seeing uh, healers, the dedicated tank coming up from Team Traitor. Also, as well as the higher boost, this is going to be great to see. However, that kind of leaves up quite a number of picks for the side of St. Reborn. And I think they've got a very classic lineup that yep. we've seen time and time again, having the two fighters, two, si uh, two fighters, an assassin, yep. uh, an assassin, an attack-based assassin as well, uh, an attack-based carry, uh, and also a your mage. dedicated tank. Yeah, it's a support tank. Something yeah, like but that. strangely enough, they didn't actually de uh, want to actually go for a mage, as we've seen in prior times. They're looking to skirmish and fight. This looks like a really big, big boy. <laughs> uh, depending on that, you know, Gushin he can be played as a mage and assassin. But of course, we do see the emblems coming in. Uh, a lot of them are using Impure Rage uh, as one of the emblems for mage itself. Perhaps Gushin could be played as pure mage instead of a hybrid I mean, assassin mage in here. I mean, in one way, in one way. Uh, look at that. True, but I mean, in the end, he's just going to be an assassin that deals <laughs> magic damage. Yeah. So I, I, this just looks like a really a uh, big. A big boy comp here. They just want to fight. Just look at this lineup. Level two, they're looking to fight. Wow, E1 for the pine final pick will okay, be Vexana. Okay, I can see this working out. This is interesting because you can see that they have Minotaur. They can copy out Chow. They can copy out Martis. They have three years yeah. to copy out and give them the clone after the curse has been set up. And it's going to be very unique to see that you have a very heavy lineup and at the same time, you're adding another member to help out in your team fight. Yeah, and I think Vexana is kind of this a very interesting pick because she is so good into heavily melee-based right. uh, melee based compositions. And as you can see, all of them are melee. So this <laughs> is going to be the perfect time to actually really pop off here because getting the clone right, you get to copy some of their stats as well. Yes. And that's great because all of them are so dependent, so dependent on auto attacks that this is going to be the perfect time for them to actually start getting ahead. Let's say you get a copy of Hellcurt. Mm, that's going to work really very, nicely very for you. Yeah. And, and not to mention that if they want to engage, they're going to be grouped up pretty well. So getting her first and second abilities aren't going to be that difficult to land as long as they're in the jungle. But let's get straight into this game. This is going to be game three. Saiyan Reborn versus Team Trader. Who's going to take this game this time round? Hmm. Ah. I am, you go first. I'm going to say team, team Trader here. I, I like their lineup. I definitely feel it's a lot more calculated and a lot better, especially against team, uh, team uh, Saiyan Reborn's uh, composition. I also like Team Trader's lineup. I think he, uh, they are using the most comfortable heroes that they have right here. I think this is the first game. Some of these are deja vu heroes being played in the first game and it works out pretty well. They're not going to mess around right now because they want to win this game. And it looks like an early taking off the jungle buffs, the jungle creeps. Very standard. I think every hero wants to get the buff to get the early advantage. But in the meantime, you can see that Hayabusa and Hylos, they are just gunning over here, trying to 
push out Team Sai Reborn away from their jungle buffs. And they don't mind actually taking a bit of uh, damage here. Yeah. They're able to heal up no problem and just take another good jungle camp. It's splitting between the both of them. One of them is going to get get some heals, so it's going to be fine overall, but they just want to deny the EXP from Hayabusa, who sees the... who sees. Oh no, Martyrs pushed it all the way down to my yeah. bot side. I got to take this wave. And taking the wave is crucial because you want to control your lane, you want to control your jungle, you don't want anyone to like intrude that jungle and steal away your jungle buff. It's very demoralizing, especially in the early rounds of the meta game. Yeah, it denies you a lot of space as well as... Uh, oh, looks like this is oh, going to be a big a fight! Nice, it looks like a very nice knockback over here after the eject coming in from jaw hit, stealing not only the gold but putting a lot of damage onto Minotaur and Hellcat. Yeah, as we can see, the regeneration is coming in from Eo, and he, he's running low on mana here, so... But he doesn't, I mean, come uh, Saiyan Reborn, they're looking for a quick rotation to catch somebody off here. I mean, Gushin, has he hit, he hasn't hit his level 4 just yet, but this is going to be the pickoff that we're looking oh, for. The ultimate does come in for Jaw Hit, but then he's unable to finish them off. He has to run away when the Dark Knight falls onto Hellcat. And they are going to stop that match. Don't want any BS from both sides. Yeah, and now the level 4s are being hit off pretty fast here. With better with better numbers coming in from Team Trader, they brought over Helios to make sure that they're able to secure this by themselves. But two rotations coming in from the side, they're looking to fight here. And the contest of Turtle will come in. The first turtle, ladies and gentlemen, is at the top side. My favorite side of the map. And here comes the fight. The top of the Helvins Highway is in place. The rest of the members will go in. While Traitor winning the turtle fight. But then they need to fall back. First Blood comes in with the triple kill of Team Saiyan Reborn. And my oh my gushin. And the rest of the team wants more blood. Mania coming in. 4k kill onto Gushin. Wow. That is a turnaround. And I think even though they lost the turtle. That is more than enough damage being done by Team Sun Reborn. Absolutely. A really great ultimate coming in from Evil here. He was in the perfect place. He hit three people with that Myrtar ultimate there. So really, a lot of respect coming in. Because if he not, had he not landed it, they probably would have only lost, they probably would have traded one for one. So with the help of Minotaur coming in and then uh, Team, uh, sorry, Gushin coming in here. So it's a clean sweep. I mean, Heroes it was set up. Hand. Yeah, it was set. It was wow. so set up for Gushin. But now, quick rotations coming in for Trader. They want to get uh, some kind of a response here. <laughs> they want to get the revenge kill. It looks like Minotaur is going to be the unlucky one to get damage. At the same time, he's going to pop out his ulti, trying to save himself over that deadly catch from Bane. Didn't look like Kachik was actually committing to the committing to the fight here, because I'm pretty yeah. sure he could have just flicked him over, and then they would have secured the kill. Kind of, kind of strange that he didn't want to use it. And it looks like the highway has popped out again, giving Team Saiyan uh, one more chance to at least defend their base, but then it looks like the top lane will be hovered onto Traitor side. They will get the top destroyed. lane despite losing Hayabusa at the bottom lane. Meanwhile, the rest of the teams are just going to scatter away back into safety. And this is kind of why you don't want to put Mardis, uh, Mardis, uh, uh, why you don't want to put uh, Hayabusa against the Mardis, because Hayabusa okay. takes some time to actually come up online. Oh, oh I thought he was game. actually going to commit to it all <laughs> in there. But yeah, as I was saying, Hayabusa can't, doesn't really come up online in the early stages of the game. He gets much better towards the mid game, Turtle and he needs that Bloodless Axe to really start pushing himself forward, to sustain in lane, and then after that, stop pumping out for damage from there on out. But it's just so difficult to do that sometimes, especially when you're up against Martyrs, because every time you stick your head in, you're going to have to take some damage, and then you're, you're forced to shadow, uh, shadow Dash out of there, which in most cases, you want to hold that up. Yes, you want to hold the ground, stand your line at least as firmly as possible, and like you said, if he were to back out, he's going to lose his economy game in the sense he wouldn't get enough farm, he's going to get pressured every single lane. It's not good for a solo Hayabusa when he's supposed to take pushes. But then the fight comes in already. A nice ultimate coming in from Team Sire Reborn. They are needing blood. Martis Ashuriken will get the first kill of this war and it looks like traitors going to fall back. They don't want to take this war again. Absolutely. Traders are doing a really good job there. Uh, I mean... It's kind of tough. Uh, it's kind of tough there because like they could decide to keep going for it, but uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Saiyan Reborn, Reborn yep. was able to pick off fish before he was able to do much in that situation. So, uh, it's it's a give and take. But really nicely done, Saiyan Reborn coming in, uh, coming in, getting the pick off, and nicely done by Trader for disengaging completely from the fight. And a huge credit to coming to Loom as well. I think his decimate was on point. Oh Instantly yeah, it was destroying the pick off from Team Trader. And this is also a smart move from Team Traitor because they feel like they want to 
continue to fight, but they say, you know what, let's not risk it. Let's just fall back, let's reset it. It's still early into the game, yeah. even though they are down by 6 kills. Exactly. Ouch. But just looking at the EXP, Hayabusa is starting to get ahead. He's going to have a, quite a bit of base damage later on. And this is what they've done previously and many, many times before. They're going to find on an objective, the take the objective, slowly peel back, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's already 6 minutes, 15 seconds down the clock. Team Sire Reborn, even though they don't have the extra turret taken down, but they have a lot of farm in their hands. 6 kills, 0. Uh, 1,000 gold lead, not too shabby. Anything is possible back. While Team Traitor, they will need to at least win objectives in the map. At least get the map control first, getting the crabs in hand before fighting in the war. They need to pump up their Hayabusa and the rest of the members who's going to lead the war. Yeah, and this is kind of ooh, playing with fire here. Just <laughs> getting very, very close. Looking for an opportunity to go all in, which I understand, but uh, just they gotta give some respect. Uh, Team Saint Reborn, they it, they could try and set up a trap here, but can they really commit to it? Because they need to take out Vixana really quick. Because if the fight is prolonged, soon. Vixana is able to pump out more and more value out of the clones, and also her abilities will come off the cooldown as well. But it's just so difficult to. See really catch her off because she's always with the, with her buddies next to her. They've got Jah, they've both got Jah and Alice right on top of each other. Like, what can you do in this particular situation? And Team Fight comes in after the bushes. It will be Team Traitors to stab them from the back. But it looks like Helka is going to get the kill onto there, giving Team Traitors that disadvantage in the fight. High loss, meanwhile, is able to get the trade off from this angle before Gushin getting his own monster kill. And the double kill comes in. Gushin, he's just going all in right now for Team Siren Reborn and they one blood Silo is there and he will be assisting Team Siren for the kill. Yeah, this is not looking too good for Trader here. One more team fight, they're gonna be at least an item ahead of them. And that's gonna be rough to deal with because right now they are a couple of components ahead. Not too bad, but they're gonna be waiting for their next power spike. I mean they're getting up the demons advent once more. They're just gonna slowly push up ahead. They're following the same build as last time, but finally the endless battle being unlocked by Fade. He's gonna have a good amount of damage now, but will he be able to 1v1 pretty much anybody onto the side? I I'm pretty sure he can take out Hellcrate given the time, but everybody else from the side of Saiyan Reborn uh, is going to be a little bit more tougher to kill. Tougher to kill indeed. Even though traitors, they are a much more well-balanced play, but again, you have to take note of Team Saiyan Reborn. You have three members who can deal so much damage. As you can see in the screen, ladies and gentlemen, the come fight will go in here as Gushin gets another kill, giving him the legendary status in town. And traitors, they have to feel very, very afraid and petrified. Yeah, I mean... Ah, I mean, it's really hard for the pick offs. To... Like, literally, the pick offs are so disadvantaged to hey, exactly. traders. I mean, traders are really trying here. Yeah. It's not like they aren't looking for opportunities to actually go in. But I mean, Hellcrit has caught them off time and time again, and that's kind of a problem here because the silence coming in from Rin is ridiculous. It looks like Evil is gonna dis, uh, suffer a bit of HP over here, but then the Lord has been stolen by T. Sorry, will be taken by Cyan Reborn. And the Lord, Almighty Lord, will continue pushing. It looks like Team Saiyan, they are a bit smarter this time. They're going to take the Lord. They're going to rush back. But then, hey, looks like there will be a comeback from here as Team Saiyan gets the kill. And one more kill coming in. A legendary status once more for dear Gushin. Yeah, and Team Saiyan, at this point of time, they've got Lord. Everything is just working for them. They need to capitalize on this Lord. They can pretty much take any objective they want on the map as long as Lord is pushing because they need because everybody from the side of Trader needs to deal with it. If not, they're going to lose the game. Oh no, Trader. Oh, the flicker super early on, really. Rather interesting. Trying to get a, a nice angle to get on uh, to get onto Vexana to unleash the Wave of the Dragon, but doesn't look like uh, he's getting anywhere too close. And I kind of like Helcut, he's away from the map. He's going to let his teammates do their dirty work over here onto the turret. But then it's going to be very easily taken down team by Team Trader onto the Lord. Absolutely. This is a slower game compared to most. More calculated, more Our thoughtful from the side of, uh, from both teams here. Which is really interesting. Ooh, Big Sana able to get the ability off, but just not going to be able to really take it all the way. But once again, Rin is just... He only comes when the team fight's about to happen. And when he needs to clean them up, that's when you see Rin coming in from the back on the Helker. Helka indeed, being the playmaking assassin player in this game, giving up a lot of opportunities for his team to initiate wars through the ultimate Dark Knight Falls. But the rest of the members of Team Saiyan, they are also confident that they can take this win ahead, or take this battles ahead. 
if you can see the compositions right now, I feel like Team Saiyan can win any single team fight given if they play their cards right. Yeah, but they need the position here, and I think I, I think Saiyan Reborn definitely has to be is starting to become very adaptable and starting to predict really, really well uh, where Saiyan is going to set up their traps, and they are just completely avoiding it here. It looks like Rin takes up Wind Taker, Wind Talker, the, the sword, and to give him the extra critical rate and max speed. And uh, there were, uh, I saw, I did see Silo getting the Divan's advantage, giving him the extra uh, advantage Our of the armor and tankiness again. This is actually really good. I mean, Silo, he doesn't need to be more of a damage dealer. He just needs to be a hybrid tank, deal so much damage, and initiate the attacks from the angles itself. Yeah, I think that that's definitely a lot better, especially uh, especially when you're on show. You don't need the full damage just yet, but they're gonna retreat from here. But coming in from the backside here, do they really want to go for this? Oh, it looks like that nice fall come in again, but Helka taking down Bane. Legendary comes in as well. Double kill. Oh, wow! And wow! A double kill as well. Triple kill. It's gonna be a wipe out. My goodness, I was just saying double kills, triple kills all the way. But then Team Sire Reborn just proved everybody wrong, especially me here, because they are going to put down the chess piece and take down the king in the chess play. Ooh, and that's going to be a 2 1 victory. On to Saiyan Reborn against Team Trader. And I mean, at the very end there, they just. Disrespect the Helker's damage. I mean, yep. that was really nasty. Once he got the silence off, once everyone popped their popped their abilities, he was able to walk around to the back, quickly pop down uh, the Nightfall, and it was just over. I mean, what could you do in that situation? Because Helker is going to consistently proc, uh, proc his passive and just continuously silence you again and again and again. And at that point, it really disrupts your